Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the second topic of the module 3 of research methodology. So, uh, the second topic is about the role of IP or that is intellectual property in the economic and cultural development of the society. That means how exactly this IP is playing a role or impact on economic and cultural development of a particular society or country or state or any place what you can take okay so definitely when you have the new thoughts new ideas you will have your IPR rights reserved and when new thoughts comes into picture definitely the more use case if it, if it has more use cases then definitely the people will try buying your product or using your methodology or process or anything else and when that happens definitely you are going to earn a lot of money that comes under economic effect, effect. and cultural development also as I told you about the straw example of the straw how we used to drink the juice earlier is totally different compared to now that way time to now so that's how you are changing yourself okay as the evolution is happening we are being changed you know we have witnessed we have witnessed a lot of changes in the same cases even the cultural development also happens along with the uh, the revolutional ideas which can be patented okay the creativity being the keystone of the progress no civilized society can afford to ignore the basic requirement of encouraging the same definitely the creativity is the major point or major key to success what you can say for the progress i will tell you one simple example <laughs> while we are talking about the civilized society and that this and all two most big heavy words the answer is simple when you are talking about uh, the progress or cultural development, the creativity always played a very important role. Maybe you know, more than billion years or you know million years back or thousands of years back, whether the IPO or IPO wasn't there. Imagine during that time also there was a progress, there was a creative and that progress, the cultural development was happening because of because of the creativity. Now this creativity, what would be the one, one of the example if I would like to say? In the beginning uh, era, if you say, go back to the stone age, the people used to use the stones and they used to carve the stones in order to, you know, uh, what do you say, the, uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, get the animals and kill the animals for their food and all, right? Right, so and then they have started discovering uh, the metals and then they started using the metals instead of stones. Okay, earlier it was wooden or sharp wooden uh, these things and then the stone and then came into the in this particular what do you say the metals, okay, steel, all these things. And nowadays we know, okay. So most of the technology has progressed. Yeah, we are having IPR that is everything nowadays but earlier there was no IPR or any such concepts but at that particular creativity from the human beings has always you know progressed our lives okay from generation to generations to from centuries to centuries so we are the result of almost a billion years of life on earth right so we can say that the creativity plays a very important role or it can add as a keystone pro of a progress okay now the economic and the society social development of a society is largely independent on the creativity if more the creativity the better will be your economy and definitely your the cultural development the production provided by the ipr to the creators or the innovators is in fact an act of incentivization of encouraging them to create more and motivates others to create new and novel things. So if you go back to the uh, uh, era of kings and uh, uh, kingdoms and all and whenever there was something new which is created by any artist definitely there was a uh, always there was an encouragement from the kingdom and they used to serve them and they used to you know, uh, you know honor them with the highest honors of uh, 
of that particular time or era. So here also same thing. IPR what it does, it does the same thing. It protects their rights and it makes sure that it encourages the people who have who are bringing the new thoughts and new ideas and which is going to definitely help the society. So however, if IPR is practiced uh, rigidly or it may have a negative impact on the progress of society, definitely if IPR is completely made very strict and uh, that this and all, then definitely it will have the negative impact on the society. For example, compliance with the trade, trade related aspects of the intellectual property that you can call it as a trips agreement okay that has affected the farming community as they are unable to store seeds for the next crops because in uh, earlier they used to get the seed they used to put it and then they used to sell commercialize it and sell the whole crops and then they used to keep a little bit amount of seeds and then they they could have used earlier but some is because of the trade related aspects of intellectual property they are not able to use the same seeds which they have they themselves have grown in the field so multinational companies regulate the price of the seeds definitely which is generally beyond the reach of the majority of the farmers so that's so how it will impact the, the ipr impacts in negative also so to succumb uh, to circumvent the negative impact of the ipr okay to overcome that now certain laws and exceptions and limitations associated with ipr has been enacted to maintain the balance between the interest of the creators and as well as the community here in this example, the interest of the creators are the thing about the farmers or maybe the the people who have invented the seeds like uh, GMO, genetically modified organism crops and GMCs and all. Right? For example, the farmers' rights under the production of the plant varieties and the farmers' rights uh, that is nothing but PEP and the FR Act in 2001, it entitles them to many privileges such as it will give the rights to the seeds provide uh, seeds provides rights to the farmers to save seeds and use seeds and share or you can also exchange or sell the seeds to other farmers also in 2001 then finally that i uh, it encountered the whatever the ipr negative impact was there so where the rights were given to the uh, farmers so that he can use and those seeds However, he, whatever he wished to, he can sell it, he can keep it and he can use it again and he can also sell it to other farmers. So now the use of copyrighted materials for education and religious ceremonies is exempted from the operational rights granted in the Copyright Act. For example, if anything uh, material, if any material has been used for educational purpose, since that there is no commercialization involved or religious practice or ceremonies, where there is no again commercialization is involved or money making is involved so that is exempted in the copyright act so similarly a patent can be revoked in the favor of compulsory licensing by the government during an emergency or natural calamity for example if any patent is there on even a vaccine and if that vaccine is completely patented by one person and if there is a calamity or there is emergency where the loss of millions of lives are dying like what happened in COVID-19, those kind of cases you are threatened, you cannot go for making money out of it. You will have to compromise with the uh, government uh, which is during the emergency or natural calamity. Okay. In addition, India is enriched with massive biodiversity and genetic resources, and their uses in uh, no, uh, is embodies in which is referred as traditional knowledge, or you can call it as a ticket. So, with initiatives like Make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, and supporting local homegrown brands, an easy as well as accessible approach to patents and trademark registrations. It is possible to reap the benefits of the, our resources. And definitely, when you are using the uh, this IPR, all these things, when you are talking about it, the Make in India, Atmanir Bhar, Bharat, and BH, whatever the government is support, these kind of initiatives are actually good, but only the problem is whether it is implemented properly or just by changing the name of previously existing schemes you are utilizing it just fooling the people that depends on you know the situations how it is happening 
if it is really is happening in Make in India, if you say Make in India, Make in India, and you are using your watch which is to around in million dollar of worth, which is being manufactured in Italy, okay, you are using the specs, the politicians, so called, you know, what to say, the Deutschbanks and all. If you are if you are using the foreign brands and asking people, the people of country, to make it uh, use uh, Make in India or become Atmanirbhar use Indian made brands all those things you should be the ideal person where you should use the Indian brands so that the definitely your followers also will automatically use uh, the things what you start initiate should not be just for the sake of the you know to say the popularity or uh, just for the show purpose it should you know contribute something to the society that is what I'm trying to say here it, in, irrespective of any uh, the parties or any politician I'm talking about the, if, the, if the schemes are coming they are well and good but whether the schemes are being kept constantly whether that help has been you know the guidance is being done or not and whether it is just for the sake of the wood bag that also has to be taken care of so that was about how the IP impacts or social and economical or you can say the cultural uh, uh, no, at, uh, development of this society. Okay, that's it. And the next topic we are talking about IP governance that we will discuss in the next class.